Hello, so let's do a quick video on what normalization is with Airbyte. Uh, in this example, I'm taking a Facebook source and I'm uh, syncing uh, it to uh, five destinations. All of them support uh, normalization today, except the local JSON file here that just writes the JSON as it is uh, sent by the source. Normalization, we'll see what it means. So if I were to focus on the Postgres destination and I will click launch, the destination will first synchronize and copy uh, four tables because there's only four streams on, on the Facebook source and I select them the all into my Postgres instance here. And if I go and inspect what's being written, then I will we'll see that there is three columns in this table and one is called Airbyte data and the whole data is in here with all the columns uh, as a JSON blob here which is not very practical to use with SQL so that's where normalization comes in uh, normalization what does it do it takes those four streams of ta of of, uh, of tables here they are, they're being written so in my target schema called Chris Facebook but they also put a prefix here air by row in, in front of the name. That's with the JSON blob. And the normalization will produce the adequate uh, table here in blue boxes here with the name that you would expect. And this will be split out. So if you can go back into Postgres, it's actually in that here, and it will, you'll see there's a lot of tables. And the reason is uh, it doesn't only do those four tables for four streams. It also takes for each of them inside, there's a next level normalization, and we'll split it into 286 uh, tables because they are nested inside of the, the, the main four tables. But let's go over uh, first the first level normalization. And what we can distinguish here, we have greens are the, the ones uh, the row table that we call source and the blue table here. All those boxes in gray, they're not written in the destination at all. Because we have a setting in our dbt project, it's called, uh, we materialize them as ephemeral, they are not written into the database. However, we could change that. I don't know if we, we should put a new UI button to, to change these settings, but if we set it to view, and then uh, we run our dbt uh, project again. So you see here the, the previous run, it created 286 tables. We create, actually created 1,146 uh, models, so different uh, SQL files. And now, it, since I've changed it to view, it will create uh, all those 1,000 uh, models as separate tables now but it will do it in a different schema so it doesn't pollute uh, the, the, the environment. So for now you see there's only Chris Facebook and Chris Facebook backup, backup is just, just to separate the, the row table. If we go and dive further fir first in the code. So if we look at in terms of SQL, what does it do? So as I said, the row table has only three columns uh, here. The first step, is extracting those JSON column into s different s separate columns here by using an e extract function. So this is generic uh, dbt uh, syntax and dbt is in charge of compiling it into the proper destination. So here it's using Postgres function but if we were on BigQuery, Snowflake or Redshift it'll change a slightly different uh, function and it will adapt to it. And that's the first step, extracting into separate columns. Next steps is here, AB2. AB2 is uh, just casting those columns into this, the, the, the type that we expect that is uh, filled up by, by the source. Then step three is uh, generating a new column uh, using a surrogate key, hashing it. This is useful when we want to go and do more unnesting in case we don't have a primary key. So we can, we are able to join 
the nested table with the parent table in case where there's no primary key already in, in, in the table. So this is making sure that we can still link uh, things back together. And as I said, com the campaigns, so then at the final table, we'll, we'll just do a select of all those columns. And you can see here at the end, actually, the, the columns. And you can see that there's an ads or ad labels. And these are in JSON uh, format as well. And so those are the nested tables that we can also split into their own table. But if we were to stop here and just keep those four tables for four sources, then we, we're done with uh, normalization level one. And we can go and go and do level two it's going further so let's go see what if we go into ads a ads underscore one underscore ab1 the first step why is it underscore one because if you go back here in the top level streams you have a stream that is called ads so ads and campaigns dot ads are conflicting in names so that's why we we added an underscore one we're gonna maybe we are probably gonna change the naming but maybe call it campaigns ads or something else I don't know yet but this table is the same we'll take the campaign table as an input instead of the source the raw source table and we'll do, do the same as parsing the JSON uh, casting the types of the columns and then selecting and then doing the hash ID and then selecting the new table here uh, what I forgot to mention is since we're in ephemeral uh, when we go and s look at the compiled uh, code the step, the intermediate steps in, in the gray boxes they are copy paste here as SQL so to generate the final tables uh, you, ha you, you find again here the hashing, the parsing the casting and the hashing uh, at the end into that table but if you go on the settings where we change here to views materialized views for the intermediate steps you see this is done it created 1144 uh, tables some of them are views some of them are tables so you can see here models and probably at the end you have also tables like here for example called function uh, and if we go into the repository instance, now you have, uh, so still this doesn't change. And you have this schema that is added that has only views if you want to go and inspect them uh, to query them as well. But right now, like uh, by default, we don't expose this intermediate schema with uh, intermediate views. because th that generates a lot of things and uh, it would be nice if we could set up like uh, we can configure things if you want the gray views or not if you want only the four or if you want the whole 286 uh, children unlisted uh, tables as well there you go